welcome back to Lambda School's Intro to Web Development. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about loops. So, what is a loop? Um, all software that runs on a computer essentially runs in a loop. Uh, it runs in a loop and it changes data between each loop until it either gets to the end of a loop and finishes or continues running forever until we physically terminate the loop. Uh, so uh, any kind of software we want to write, we're going to need to learn how to write loops. Uh, what a loop is essentially is a block of code that runs until a condition has been met uh, or could run forever. Right? <clears throat> there are two basic types of loops uh, in JavaScript. There is a for loop and a while loop. In this course, we're going to be focusing on a for loop. So the basic rundown of a for loop is this. Uh, I know it might seem kind of intimidating seeing a lot of different code on the screen, but I'll break it down for us. First and foremost, we have the, we must initialize a variable. So in this case, we're saying let i, so that we know that the let means that we're going to uh, create a variable. We're gonna name the variable i. You can actually name the variable whatever you want. And we're going to initialize that. We're going to assign that variable to the number zero. Uh, this is a loop that you'll see quite often. Uh, we'll learn about why in a later video. Uh, but we can do anything we want. We can say let name equal Dan. We can let whatever we want. Um, this is just kind of a traditional loop here. So that's the first item. We have a semicolon and then we have the second item. And the second item is an expression, and we're gonna see if this evaluates to true. Um, so we need something that evaluates to true or false, to a Boolean. In this case, we're gonna say i is less than 10. And the first time we see that i is zero, so i less than 10, that's gonna be true. The third item is we're gonna have an accumulator. We're gonna have something that happens in between each loop. Uh, in this case, we're gonna have uh, one added to i. You may not have seen the plus plus symbol before, but all that's saying is i equals i plus one. It just adds one to i. Finally, we're gonna have our block, and then we're gonna have code to run each time. So let's write a loop. First, we're gonna write the keyword, four. We're also gonna have our parentheses, and we're gonna have our code block. Kind of looks familiar, like an if statement, right? But for is going to tell the browser or whatever's running the JavaScript that this is a loop. Then we're gonna write our original um, assignment. So we're gonna say let, and I'm gonna say i, and I'm gonna make that equal to zero. Okay, so we have our first item. So we have an assignment. So the first time the loop runs, it's going to run this. And this is the only time it's gonna run, the only the first time. So we're gonna create a variable called i and set that to zero. Then we're going to have an evaluation. Well, in this case, we'll say i is less than 10. And this is gonna run each time the loop happens. Uh, we'll go through it in just a moment. Finally, we're going to have our accumulator. So we're going to say i, in this case, we're going to say i equals i plus i1. This can be anything. We can say i equals i plus 100, right? But for now, we're going to say plus 1, and we can write this in shorthand by just saying plus plus. Okay, so within our code block here, we have access to i. So let's just console log, this is i, and we'll give it i. So let's go over what's gonna happen. First and foremost, our loop is gonna be initialized with this variable, i equals zero. Like I did before, this is the only time this is gonna run, this is the first time through the loop. Next, our loop is going to ask, is this true? If this is true, 
we're going to run the code inside of here. If this is false, we are going to finish the loop. So if this is true, so the first time we're going to have i equals 0, i is going to be less than 10, 0 is less than 10, so this is true, the code will run. After the code is finished running, the third expression happens. So i1 will be added to i, and then we start over. But we don't start at the very beginning. Remember, this only happens the first time. We're going to start right here. So now i is going to be 1, and we're going to say, is 1 less than 10? Yes. Run this code, then run this, and then check. 2 less than 10. Run the code, run i plus 1, and then check. 3 less than 10. And this is going to happen up until we get to 10, right? So 9 is going to run. We're going to print out 9 to the screen. Then when i equals 10, it's going to run, and it's going to say 10 less than 10, and that's false. So once that happens, we're going to exit, we're not going to run the code, and we'll exit the loop. Let's check it out. There we go. We have our first is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we notice that 10 didn't get printed to the screen because 10 is not less than 10, so this did not run. Fantastic. We've written our first loop. Let's start it with another number, and we'll go up to 16. So we should get 1 through 15 printed on the screen, right? And there we go. 1 all the way through 15. So this is going to run as long as this is true. Okay, this, this code will run as long as this is true. And only when this is false will this code not run. All right, let's check out something a little funky. What if I said i equals 0 and 1 is greater than or equal to 0? Let's talk about what's going to happen here. So i is equal to 0, 1 is, or i is greater than or equal to 0. That's true. This will run. This will happen. We'll get 1. 1 is greater than or equal to 0. That's true. We'll get 2. 2 is greater than or equal to 0. 3 is greater than or equal to 0. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Do you see a pattern here? Is there ever going to be a case where i is no longer greater than or equal to 0? No, that's just not going to happen because we're going to add 1 to it and this is always going to run. It's going to run forever. And this is what's known as an infinite loop. We want to make sure that we avoid infinite loops uh, because they can, outside of this REPLIT system, uh, crash our browsers, they can crash our computers, they can crash our servers if it's running on a server, um, and they will never stop. So we have to make sure. I'm going to run it right now, and REPLIT thankfully is uh, put a fail safe in there to catch it, but let's see how long it's going to take. All right, well, we're back, and uh, actually, we ran this, and it didn't break. Uh, it actually, Replit didn't safeguard it, uh, and it did break. So uh, there you can see the dangers of uh, writing an infinite loop. So we always want to make sure that our loop has an out, right? So we do something like less than 10, and that works. Uh, you might run into an infinite loop, and you might have to restart your browser, and worst comes to worst, you're going to have to restart your computer. Uh, that should be the, the extent of it, but watch out for those infinite loops. Uh, so, once more, we are going to go over the three parts of this. So, first one, we are going to declare a variable. Second, we are going to have a conditional statement. That's going to be checked every time this loop runs. And finally, we are going to uh, increment the variable.
And this is our standard for loop here. See you in the next video.